You know, shout out to DeAndre Ayton for having his own mind, for pretty much refusing to operate according to that group think mentality where everybody just, you know, adheres to the same thing and this is what we abide by. This is what we deem as an unofficial rule and whatnot. DeAndre Jordan, excuse me, DeAndre Ayton comes off as someone who doesn't follow that. And I feel like, you know, that could be a part of that rift between he and the coach. I feel like he's not a capitulator and he's someone who pretty much operates according to his own mind for the most part. We know in the NBA, these people, they got to operate according to that cult-like mentality or, you know, this is a team, this is my family, I'm loyal to this team. At the end of the day, man, there's certain things that you have to just understand in regards to just being your own man and assessing things, you know, from a critical standpoint. You know, from a standpoint of sound reasoning and logic, it's like, why am I going to get mad at a player for entertaining his home fans? <laughs> why am I going to get mad at a player for that? And this unofficial rule should never have been in place to begin with. It's just really nonsensical, and it really speaks to how sensitive these players can be. Like, it's basketball. If you're down by 40, that's your fucking fault. Why are you getting mad because a player want to, quote, unquote, rub it in? No, let him get his stats. Let him, let him get his time. I never been some I never been with that at all. I always looked at it as like, come on, bro. Who cares? You the one who put yourself in that position anyway. You y'all as a team. So y'all get mad at the man for doing what he's supposed to do to get paid? Come on, man. Zion Williamson, he had every right to do that 360 windmill dunk. Especially being that he was sidelined for damn near a whole year last year. And plus, you know, he even talked about it in context in regards to how he was sent home or his team was sent home by the Phoenix Suns in last year's playoffs. So it was only right that he gave it to them. And I think that the Suns lost the next game against the Pelicans. So it's like, come on, bro. It's all nonsense. And it just speaks to the level of sensitivity that these NBA players have, that entitlement as well. It's like semi-entitlement. It's like, bro, how are you going to get mad at this player for, you know, giving it to you? Pretty much. He just gave it to your ass. That team as a whole, they gave it to y'all as a team. And you want to make it seem like, oh, they, they breaking the rules. They breaking the unofficial rule of sportsman like conduct. That's bullshit. I'm doing what I got to do to please the fans as well as the people that's watching, as well as me earning my bread. The fuck? I never was somebody that was with that, like that unofficial rule. Like, fuck that shit. No, you play the game to the end of the game. I walked off the court. Yeah. Right off the court. No, the reason I asked is because... I didn't even see what happened. I left the bench. I left left the bench and went to the back. Well, Payne was saying that he thought that Zion dunk at the end Mm -hmm. is what was unsportsmanlike. Well, I turned my back and I walked off. Once I seen him pass half court with his head down, what you want to do? I can't get back in that play. You got to take it out of bounds. It's whatever. It's a home court. Exactly. And if you see that man running, doing the 360 windmill dunk, then run after him. Foul him. The fuck? It's like, come on, man. That's that's that real low level sensitivity bullshit. You all in your feelings over a player playing the game. It's like you guys compete for forty eight minutes. <laughs> that's just what it is. Only for his fans. I, I think none of that stuff personal, man. I worry about folks game, man, when it counts. Curious, just what you feel like. You know, them getting out to that league, what, what led to them doing what they did to I think. Home, court, they got their fans in it. That's it? That's what I'm saying. How, how every other uh, home team get their advantage and, you know, get, get amped up and get their momentum. Yeah, they get riled up by the fans. <laughs> I mean, come on, what you mean, that's it? He said that's it because the reporter wanted DeAndre Ayton to say something different. <laughs> it's like, man, it's so dangerous to operate according to that group think mentality. Because you start to become that, you and, and the more and more you start to lose yourself in regards to your, your your autonomous mentality, like your autonomous understanding of okay, I have to separate myself from that 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 group thing. Because at times, you know, it's necessary. I wouldn't even say it's necessary, but I understand it. You know, in regards to certain attitudes and you know certain modes of this is what we adhere to. This is what it is according to the group, according to how we should you know, operate. But in certain instances, it's like there's times where you got to be your own man. You got to, you got to have your own mind. 
especially when it comes to like shit like this. Like this is this is illogical. You get mad at a player for playing the game. I get it. You know, people would say, oh, it's unsportsmanlike. It's not unsportsmanlike because at the end of the day, they're at their home court. They're at their home court. <laughs> it's not, you know, rubbing it in. At the end of the day, you play the game. You play the fucking game. And they're getting paid. So why are you in your feelings? <laughs> you lost anyway. You know, what, what's it going to hurt for another, another point added to the scoreboard? Like another two points. What, what, like, come on. You lost the fucking game anyway. So get mad at yourself for not competing. Look at yourself. That's what we all should do. Like, this should be a good example of how we should look at what we could have done instead of getting mad at them for rubbing it in our face. Like, get out of here with that bullshit. Get mad at you. You didn't put yourself in a position to make the game interesting enough to where Zion wouldn't even do that. And even if it was close enough, Zion still probably would have did that if they won or even if they lost. Because it was all about just pleasing the fans. I'm on my home court. Zion Williamson is a walking highlight. So, of course, he's going to do some shit like that. Get out your feelings. The fans was in it completely. And, you know, um, not taking no credit away from them. They played hard as well. They played hard and they had a game plan for us. Simple as that. And for us, we didn't execute half the game we wanted to execute when it comes to songs of basketball, but at the same time, this is the league. We see them in two days. It's like, this is, it'll be a whole new story when I wake up. And I believe the Suns lost that game. You know, the Pelicans, they on the rise, man. They, <laughs> they killing. But, you know, I know the recent two losses against the Jazz kind of hurt them. But they was close. But still, the Pelicans, they on the rise. I see them at least making it to the second round and maybe the Western Conference Finals against the Lakers. I'm telling you all, the Lakers are going to the finals this year. The Lakers are going to the finals. And if they don't go to the finals, they're going to have Ja Morant in the finals this year. But the Lakers... I believe they, they're going to push the Lakers to go to the finals. And I don't speak on that as far as, like, you know, it being rigged, per se. It's just more about, like, you know, the machinations and who they want to, um, to face off in the finals, as well as just to play. Like, I always speak on different sides of it. The LA Lakers, they're playing, they playing at a fucking great level right now, man. Even though they lose in certain games, they lose in a lot of close games. Like, their record should be more better than what it is right now, just based off of, like, certain uh, mishaps, like, you know, uh, Anthony Davis missing two free throws, certain games that they couldn't close out. But the Lakers, man, they're going to they do good. They're going to be great, especially um, given the fact that you don't have the trade deadline yet. They're going to get some trade. They're going to get some assets. That team is going to be dangerous, the Lakers. But I feel like the Pelicans, man, they're going to make that leap. You know, second round, that's not much of a leap, but considering the team that they have or the team that they were to the team that they have, because they're a great team right now. They have a lot of great um, assets. But, you know, making the second round, that's, that's, that's a good leap for them. And I feel like that's not going to be enough in regards to what's going to play out. You know what I mean? Like what I see. I see the Pelicans going to the Western Conference Finals against the Lakers, but if they don't, that's still not, you know, that's still not a failure for them. Either the Lakers and the uh, Pelicans in the Western Conference Finals or the Lakers and the Grizzlies. I see those three teams going to the Western Conference Finals. You got to, you know, you got to consider the Clippers and the Mavericks and whatnot, but I don't know, man. I just see AD on a mission right now. I know you got injured, so that could probably change certain things, but, I mean, you never know because, you know, <laughs> sometimes I waver. I go from the Clippers to the Grizzlies to the Pelicans, the Lakers, the Mavericks, the Golden State Warriors, like those six teams. But, you know, for the most part, I've been saying the Lakers a lot. I've been saying the Lakers a lot just based off of what I see going on, you know, during the trade deadline. But I know I'm going on a little tangent. Let's just uh, continue on in this video. So you think what happened tonight will carry over? And what happened tonight? None of that was carry over. We don't, we, we don't do that for the Chiefs. Like, it is what it is. Deuce Bluffs, they, you know, eat they, uh, eat they dinner. It might not taste as good tonight, but they're going to fill their stomach up and go to sleep. You got practice tomorrow. We're going to get back to it. It's 82 games in this thing, man. You can't wait for one game. We only learn from this thing. Um, one thing about us, uh, it ain't no mistakes, man. It's just lessons from these L's. Um, you just got to break out of it and get back to our rhythm. Not rhythm like we really need to talk, though, because this was all over social media, about the ending of Suns Pelicans Friday night because it was spicy. Mr. Joel Myers, please, please, take it away. 
is over. Pels no, no, no. get it done. And on the spin and the reverse. The you could hear the commentator saying, no, 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 because he probably understood that it could have been some sort of you know, backlash from this. But at the end of the day, man, Zion is going to be Zion. He's an entertainer. Zion is different. You know, he's a walking highlight. He's one of those anomalous players where it's like every time he does something, people get, you know, they they at the edge of their seats to a degree. Even when he jumps, like his jump is just different. His hops is different. Like the dude is different. So Zion had to do that. Especially, like I said, given the fact that he was out for a whole year last year, pretty much. That was a little out of character for me, but you got to understand. I mean, you can understand it or not. They sent my teammates home last year. I missed all last year. I got carried away a little bit. I admit that. But when I was in that locker room, my brothers were down because... You know, the Suns sent us home last year. That, that's a tough moment to be a part of, so. And that was a competitive series last year, too. That was a competitive series. Like, that series let me know, okay, they're going to they gonna be a problem. That's why it's not that much of a surprise right now that they um number one, number two in the West because it's like you saw what they did in the playoffs. You saw the addition of C.J. McCollum. When they got C.J. McCollum, C.J. McCollum last, last season, they started to really cook. They started to really, really cook. They they was on that hunt. They made the playoffs from being in the play-in. And, you know, they was really doing well. And then people were saying, though, imagine if Zion would have played in that playoff series. Probably would have been different. In that moment, I got carried away. I admit that. That was out of character for me. So, you know, if they was to do the same thing, I wouldn't have no problem with it. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and even if there wasn't anything behind it, it's just like, Bro, you playing the basketball game. You're getting paid. Then you got to consider the fact that the fans are watching. You want to please the fans. Sometimes it's not about that whole, you know, unwritten rule or sportsmanlike, all that bullshit. It's more about just pleasing the fans and, you know, giving them a good product. I'm not mad at it. When we have a dunk like that, we need... Yo, Janae Okumage, Ogumake, she be looking good. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> she be looking good. Nice, tall, chocolate thing right here. She, she's a beautiful lady. Bring Vince Carter onto the show. We're probably never going to see Zion Williamson in a dunk contest. So before we discuss anything else, Vince, can you please grade that exceptional dunk? And that's unfortunate, Sinead, that we won't see him because he has a lot of dunk talent. But if I had to grade it, I'm gonna go ahead and give my man can y'all see that? Oh, a yeah, 10. we can. Oh, we a can. And, but, here's, but here's why. And tonight, here's why. I mean... You need a Sharpie, bro. You need to write that with a Sharpie. <laughs> Don't look dark enough. But now nah, we can see that. And it's unfortunate that Zion never is going to be in the dunk contest. It's like, come on, bro. We need to see more of the Zions and the Jaws and even the uh, the guy from Houston, young boy from Houston, um, Jalen Green. We need to see them type of guys in the dunk contest, man. Not, I mean, we're talking about just ability, and he's in the air, and it, it, did, it didn't look rushed. It looked like he was just, look at here, he's just taking his smooth. time in the air. You see right here, he's just... Yeah, like nice and smooth takeoff. <laughs> take my time, full extension on the turnaround on the windmill, and then when he got there, it was just like, oh, yeah, here's the rim, finish, look at it right there, boom, throws it through. Not squeeze it, not yeah. rush it, but throws it through. He gets a 10 all day for me. Yeah, Zion. Oh, this looks quite familiar. Uh, yeah, this. Yeah, that damn sure was the same dunk. That that legendary Vince Carter dunk, man. But you know, the point of this video was pretty much to emphasize DeAndre Ayton having a separate opinion or pretty much not operating according to that groupthink mentality. It segued into this because you know the context kind of matches the recent video or the prior video. But really, just wanted to touch on the DeAndre Ayton angle where. You know, he operates according to his own mind for the most part. You know, I don't know what goes on in the locker room, so I can't say that, you know, that's 100 percent. But just based off of what we see, what he admits, it seems like he's someone that operates according to his own mind. And in certain aspects, he doesn't capitulate. So, you know, that's somebody that, you know, I can commend. So God bless you all and Shalom. Peace.